Hi, my name is Dylan. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. So I'm going to start you off with an easy question. Uh, How did you get into music? Um, I started really young, just doing vocal lessons since I was seven years old. And I think it was just a love that I was pursuing forever. <laughs> it started just as a hobby, but then I started going to school for it when I was 18. And that now I'm here today. <laughs> okay. So when you were younger, did you ever think that you'd be a musician or was was that just kind of like something that you thought, oh, I'm just going to do this for fun? Um, I think when I was younger, that was like what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a musician. There was nothing ever else that I wanted to be. But then when I grew older, it was like, I have to be realistic. This will be just a hobby or this will be a side gig or whatever. And now I'm trying to be optimistic again <laughs> and the oh, okay. confidence that I had when I was younger. <laughs> gotcha. So um, how about you tell me about, uh, if you don't mind, your childhood and all that. My childhood? Um, I grew up, I was born and I grew up here in Edmonton, Alberta in Southside. I um, have, have not moved around much. I've lived in two houses. One of them is the one that I'm in right now. And the other one is a couple doors down. We just moved a couple doors away and I haven't been anywhere else. <laughs> okay, um, well, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and I was, this elementary I went to is a like a two minute walk away. High school is down the street and then I went to college just downtown. So I've been in the same city vicinity for a very long time, but I like it here. No, I understand. I live on a farm right now, and uh, we I went to a rural school, which is like a five-minute drive, so I've basically been here my, ho my whole life, so I don't know much about city mm -hmm. living, so. Yeah, well, at a certain point, you grow attached to where you come from, you know, so I understand. Oh, yeah, I got a whole bunch, I got three pairs of cowboy boots and basically <laughs> one pair of jeans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, when you when you were singing, like start out and all that, does anyone else in your family have a musical background, or was it just you? Um, well, I think my family. I think you could consider them as generally musical. Um, uh, it's not just me. My brothers. Um, I think like most people, I we've all been growing up being put in music lessons. Um. I have three brothers and two of them did guitar lessons and they like to play guitar, but just as a hobby, but they're quite good. And um, my other brother plays drums and he really likes that. Um, and my dad is really musical. He likes to play guitar. He grew up in a big Irish family and my grandpa played the fiddle. And um, I think he was quite active in the Irish Edmonton community playing the fiddle in competitions and all that stuff. So it's a musical family um, to a degree, yeah. Okay, that's cool. If you don't mind me asking, what nationalities are you? Irish. Just Irish? Mm hmm That's cool. Um, I'm def definitely mixed, but um, my dad's parents were born in Ireland, so I'm okay. half Irish. Yeah. That, that's cool. I've heard a lot of good stories about Irish people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're fun for sure. So, growing up, like you said, you said you wanted to be you want to become more of a mu musician. Uh, do you have any like side jobs you do, or are you just kind of focusing on your main music career? I definitely have um, some jobs. I've started working when I was like, I don't know, fifteen, and I've just cared because I need I got I got to make money somehow, but yeah. At the moment, I have um, a, a couple jobs. I teach music, um, music lessons, piano and singing. And I also work at a restaurant and I gig regularly around town. So I consider that a job too. So okay. three part-time jobs. Yeah. I also work at, at a restaurant. So I understand where you come from from that standpoint. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um. I was reading into you a little bit, and I noticed that you released an EP on in, on, in the early month of February here. And um, I mm -hmm. think I was, did. I think I read somewhere that you wrote all those songs due to per, your person personal life. Is that right? 
Yeah, that's right. So uh, would you consider yourself an avid songwriter or like, for example, do you do all of your, do you write all your songs or? Yeah, I, I, I love songwriting. I think it's my main favorite, like my main focus. It's okay. my passion, I would say, is songwriting. And yeah, I wrote all the songs on the EP. I wrote myself. Um, I've collaborated with arranging in the studio and stuff, but the song, the lyrics, I have a passion for writing lyrics and I just love writing songs. So yeah, I, it seems to be something I can't really stop doing. It's like a, like an itch, like I write songs all the time and it's kind of makes me think that I'm crazy. <laughs> That's good that you're very creative in that sense. That's a good thing to have as a personality trait. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so do you have a process when you're writing songs? Um, not really. It's kind of weird. I've thought about this a lot. Um, because some people are able to just sort of schedule a time and be like, I'm going to write a song today at two. Um, but that's harder for me. I kind of just have to let it come to me. Um, it kind of just material materializes out of nowhere into my head. It's kind of like all of a sudden when you get a song stuck in your head out of nowhere, that sort of happens to me, but like with ideas. And so I kind of have to just let it come to me. I can't, I, I've practiced, I try to practice being able to sit down and write and that sort of um, self control with um, the skill. And for co-writing, that's the thing too, is that you know that you're going to go on Tuesday and write a song. But all of most of my songs just come to me out of nowhere and I have to, I get like this um, wave of ideas or creativity and then that's when it happens. Right. Uh, do you, do you like when you, whenever you perform on stage, do you, is it usually like a one person show or do you have like a band that you perform with? I have a band. Yeah. Okay. Um, some, well, it depends on the venue because sometimes if it's like a low key coffee shop or restaurant, I'll just play the piano and have it like a stripped acoustic type thing. But yeah, usually when it's a bigger performance um, at bigger venues, I definitely have a band with me. Okay. Uh, what do you think you like most about performing? Um, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I think that um, it took me a long time to get over my fear of performing. I definitely had a pretty bad stage fright. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, I didn't particularly like it like I was really nervous really self-conscious but it was I knew it was something I had to do um but I'm once you get over that um fear and nervousness and you just have to sort of learn to you have to learn how to get rid of your inhibitions when you get up there and just have fun and once you're up there with like all the people in my band or my pals and it's kind of just jamming out and it's a um I let myself feel the support and the love from the people who come out and see me and it, it kind of just feels like a like a nice party <laughs> and okay. I allow, allow myself to have some fun um it took a while to get to that point though so I think my favorite part of performing would be just allowing myself to have the fun <laughs> like, right and uh, do you, what kind of activities or hobbies do you do on the side? Um, I like to write poetry as well, other than um, songs. And I have two dogs that I like to t um, take care of and walk and spend lots of time with. I love spending time with my family and friends. That's my favorite thing to do. And um, yeah. Other than music, I'd say my hobbies are writing and reading. I love to read and um, yeah, just lots of other, um, I just like to be a patron of the arts, um, watching movies, reading, poetry, spending time with friends and family as well. Okay, that's cool. So, um, uh, I went blank for a second, sorry. That's okay. Um, 
while I get back to that, uh, when you're performing on stage, do you, how do you embrace the fans? Like, for example, does it bother you if, like, some people aren't watching you perform, or do you just kind of tune it out and focus on the ones that are watching you? Yeah, it doesn't bother me, um, because they showed up anyways, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're there, so it doesn't bother me if, um, you're not really watching or if they're having a conversation with someone in the um, back or anything it doesn't bother me I just um to be honest with you I just sort of get really into my own body and in my own mind and sing the songs and try to have fun myself and then I just hope that everyone else is having as much fun as me <laughs> okay yeah well what would you classify your genre of music as um I would say it's a, a pretty good mix, but a blend of folk and pop and roots and a little bit of country, but mostly folk and pop and roots, I'd say. Okay. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you performed? Um, the last time I performed was last weekend. Um, it was for, yeah, I think that was last weekend, the 3rd, February, third or fourth I'm not even sure what day it is <laughs> yeah so not not this last Saturday but the Saturday before um yeah and it was for my EP release party and I was at 9910 in Edmonton and it was a blast it was so much fun do you did, do you like the fact that you grew up in Edmonton or do you kind of wish you grew up in some place a little more musical like Nashville or like in the states or you or somewhere else in Canada Well, if we're comparing Edmonton to Nashville, I would prefer to be born in Nashville. That's okay, that's what, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think for a long, long time, I had it in my mind that I don't like Edmonton. I want to get out of Edmonton. I always thought this was sort of a dead end town, kind of. No, I shouldn't call it a town. It's a pretty big city. But um, I always thought it was sort of a dead end. But that's not really true. The more I spend time as an independent adult out here, the music community is really close knit and beautiful here in Edmonton. And it's definitely not as lucrative as somewhere like Nashville or um, I don't know, LA or New York or Toronto, but it's, it's a good people here. So I don't, want to leave as bad as I did before but I do want to I still do want to dip my toes into the other music scenes as well <laughs> right have you have you ever traveled any place when you to sing a show or a, a concert or anything like that yes I've been to um Toronto just for uh the honey jam um auditions there I was years ago they it was before COVID but they would have um people come sing and um in a bar there and it was lots of fun and I also have been to Jasper and um yeah mostly Edmonton based though I'm looking forward to going to lots of other places though come um in the near future gotcha is there one like particular place like that you love to perform at even just like once just for fun like there's some place that you always wanted to play at ever since you were younger that's a great question um I don't know uh I think I've always just wanted to um whenever I would see artists um and it doesn't even have to be big artists like indie artists or whoever when they go on um, tours in Europe and they get to go to Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, Belgium, and they go and even if it's little um, pub gigs or mm -hmm. um, smaller stage gigs, I just thought it was so cool. They get to go to each of these cities and play. That's like a double vacation. And I think that would be, I think when I was younger, I always thought that was so cool that, that singers and artists got to do that. So that would probably be the one thing I'd want to do for fun is small little tour around somewhere far away would be very cool. Oh yeah. 
what kind of career would you choose if you didn't choose music? Like, let's, like, you know, let's say you're like, oh, well, music, you know, I tried it, and I don't know if it's going to work, and you just decide to do something else. Is there, like, something, another dream job or, like, a backup thing you had in mind or in place? Yeah, I wouldn't, um, I don't know if it would be, it's a dream job because I think the dream is um, the arts for sure. Mm -hmm. But I've definitely spent lots and lots of time thinking about this. And I love psychology. I, my first year in school, I was majored in psychology. And I just think um, therapy would be a really good fit for me. Um, whether that's music therapy, that would be a good blend of the two or just behavioral therapy. Um, I've thought about that. And I think that's what it would be or teaching, um, I do really enjoy spending time with kids and I teach music right now. And I always thought it would be pretty fun being in a school and having a classroom and um, having a degree right now. It, you only have to go back to school for two years to become a full teacher. Um, right. So that's also another, another route that's definitely possible. Yeah, I have to agree with you because I was in band when I was in high school and junior high. And mm -hmm. like, even though I'm graduated, I come back every now and then just for the junior high band, just to help them out a little bit. Right. And it's so much yeah. fun just seeing the little kids, you know, like first time playing instruments or just helping them out. You know, it gives you that mm -hmm. sense of warm feeling and relief. Like you're doing something positive. Absolutely. And as also like so some of the most um, influential people in my life have been teachers. I am 23 years old and I still think about my elementary teachers. Um, I don't think there's anything more important and influential to a person's growth and formation than a good teacher who is there for you and knows what they're doing. I like, mm -hmm. yeah, all the teachers in my life. I totally agree with you. Yeah. If you, you you know you're a good teacher if you have someone that still remembers you after they've gone and graduated. Mm-hmm. Da absolutely. What would you say is your most favorite thing, like either before you perform or after you perform? Like, like do you like meeting up with some of the fans afterwards or before the show, before anything, or do you like just kind of taking it all in and relaxing before you perform? Yeah, um, I think before I perform, I, it depends how I'm feeling, because if I'm nervous for the gig, um, I'll be very, I'll have a lot of nervous energy, and I'll probably just need to be in the mind space. I'll, I get really nervous about remembering lyrics, so I'll be going over lyrics in my head, like, just sort of rehearsing quietly in intro to myself, but if I'm feeling confident, if I'm feeling good, I really like to go and talk to people who came. I like to be out and um, mingling and um, yeah, that's what I really like to do. It kind of gets me excited. And I like to watch um, the opening acts or the other acts that are there to sort of get me pumped up and like, it gets me excited. And then after a gig, I really just like to hang out with, um, go see my friends who came or anyone who came that I can talk to. Right. Would you say you're like a social butterfly type person or are you more of an introvert in general? Um, in general, I think I'm a, I think I'm a pr pretty mixed, um, probably leaning, probably leaning towards the introvert side. Okay. Um, but you wouldn't guess if I was out, um, out at a gig or out at a bar or something, um, I can make myself seem quite extroverted if I want to, or if I have like two beers in me, I won't shut up. So it'll be, it'll seem quite extroverted, but on any other daily given basis, I, I can be quite introverted. I don't really leave my house. Well, I think that's a good blend. Yeah. Um, in your music career so far, do you have any regrets or anything like that? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I think my music career so far is too young to have any, any notable regrets. 
I only released my first single in September. So I, yeah, a great, no, a great I, single it was, I mean, wow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And yeah, no, I don't have any regrets about school. Um, I think it all has panned out pretty nicely so far. That's good to hear. I mean, we've kind of, no, no, don't get me wrong, but if you said like, you know, I wish I would have done a couple things better, I'd be like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> well, things definitely don't go perfectly. And I like, um, like I haven't had things go, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that, but things haven't gone perfectly and I've definitely had bad moments, but I think looking at it um, in the grand scheme of things, one thing always leads to another and something always happens because of something else. So I wouldn't change any, anything that I've done so far because otherwise I wouldn't be where I am right now. Right. And it always, whenever something bad, you could say bad happens and that's a learning experience to grow and exactly. be 10 times better at it. So. Mm -hmm. Cause then I wouldn't know what I know now. And how can you regret that? Yeah. So our last, serious topic is um if you could change one thing in your life what would it be and like that's in general mm. hmm just in general like yeah. anything yeah um <laughs> i was not expecting like existential crisis questions um I think maybe having more disposable money that you can spoil people with or um, help yourself out with, but I wouldn't change where I am. I wouldn't change, um, like if I could just stay where I am, but just have more money in my bank account. <laughs> that is such a bad answer. It's a reasonable one, though. I'll give you that. It is reasonable. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to change. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what else I would change, to be honest. I don't want to change where I am. I like, I honestly like being real close to my family. And like I said, Edmonton, I always wanted to move out of Edmonton. But if I'm were to be somewhere else then i would miss dearly my friends and my family and i mean if i wanted to move i could just move right now yeah. so if i could change something big it would be like lots of disposable money i suppose to spoil people and um make more records and not have to apply to grants <laughs> right not that i mind <laughs> okay um so this next part I like to do is like a question and answer thing, right? Where I get to know a little bit more about you. I'm not so serious, just to know your general information. Okay. So what's your favorite color? Green. Why is it green? Why is it green? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I just, when I see it outside, when it's like summer, the trees, the grass, the, I just find it really beautiful. But also I just think it's, I just think it's the best color. <laughs> I I resonate with it, I guess. Okay, I, I'd have to disagree with that, but I appreciate your opinion. What's your favorite color? I like blue. Fair enough. That's a Maybe good that's because I'm a country boy, but I like blue. Yeah. Um, what do you, what do you do any sports or anything like that? Not currently, no. I grew up um dancing. I was in competitive dance from ages three to 18. So quite a while. Holy smokes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I also played volleyball in junior high, but okay. other than that, I'm not, not an athletic type. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, do you play any video games or anything like that? No, but I wish I did. Um, <laughs> I sometimes I find myself really just wishing I had a game to play or something to be into and find really fun. I kind of want to get the new Harry Potter game to try out. Um, okay. I feel like that would be a good starting point for me because I'm not very dexterous with any game console, but 
I need something low stakes <laughs> to get okay. into. So, gotcha. So, no, I don't play any video games, but I kind of wish I did. Do you have any favorite movies or TV shows? Yes, I love movies and TV shows. Um, it's hard to pick a favorite. I think one of the best ones I've seen recently is Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's one of the best ones I've seen in a while. That's a movie. Um, but um, my favorite movie of all time, that's pretty tough. Um, uh, this is kind of nerdy, but I love Les Miserables, the movie <laughs> specifically. I love that movie. Um, and I love The Hunger Games. That's also a little nerdy, but I, that's, I was actually on TV today and I was watching that. Um, and I think my favorite TV series, probably, I like Peaky Blinders a lot. And um, Game of Thrones. I like those really big epic um, series that you can really get attached to. Those are my favorite ones. Okay. Uh, what would you say, say your typical evening is? Like, do you like to watch like Netflix and just like relax, or are you more like focused on doing stuff? Like, no, definitely. I like I'm like to get my stuff done during the day and just veg out at nighttime. Um, after dinner, I I'm very much a couch potato, so um, I try to get all the things that I need to do during the day when I was in school I would study during nighttime I don't know why that was kind of my study time but now that I'm graduated and I have nothing to study for now thank god um yeah I like to I like to read or I like to yeah watch tv or movies on the couch my family likes to watch Jeopardy while we're having dinner so we watch <laughs> Jeopardy together um but yeah that's cool and you said you had a uh two brothers right is that all your siblings or I have three brothers oh three brothers right yeah okay. that's all my siblings gotcha and um uh before I, we go here is there anyone you'd like to shout out or anything of course i i can you can email me and we'll get some links and all that i can put in the description uh but for right now is there anyone you want to shout out to or do credit or anything like that like the floor is yours um, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to shout out Mallory Chipman. She's my mentor throughout this music journey. Um, my friend and my mentor and I, my role, role model. I'd also like to shout out Mark McClure. He's the, um, recording engineer and producer on the EP introspection. And, um, yeah, also shout out to everyone who's been listening this last week to the new music and um, the love that I'm receiving. That's great. And um, would you mind shouting out your dogs so I know what their names are and what breed they are? My dogs? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, my small dog is named Sadie. She is a Welsh Terrier. And my big dog is named Justin. And he's a mix. We don't know what he is, but he's huge, gigantic, and he's black and very furry. So to awesome. be that, that sounds awesome. They look, sound so cute and adorable. Yeah, they're great. And uh, before we go, you have any questions for me? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. I don't have any questions for mine right now. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, oh, last thing I want to ask is, do you have any merch or anything like that? I do have merch, yeah. Okay. I haven't posted about um, the shirts yet, but I have shirts and I have stickers and CDs. That okay, I, that's good to know because I'm interested in getting some merch. So Yay. good. Count me a, count me as a loyal customer going forward. <laughs> Great, thank you. Well, I appreciate you and the time you've given me, and um, hopefully we I can come up to one of your latest venues and see you perform that would be fantastic i appreciate you in the interview well thank you so much have a great rest of your evening you as well bye bye